Hi there, and welcome back to Sotten Brain Hub. My name is Calvin, and today we'll be taking a look at the arrangement of the lymph nodes of the head and neck. Let's start by recapping the function of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a network of tissues and organs that serve to drain tissue fluid, plasma proteins, and other cellular debris back into the bloodstream. The system also has important immunological function and can produce lymphocytes and other immune cell subsets to destroy any foreign pathogens that may enter the body. Structurally, the system consists of lymphatic vessels, which can be thought of as similar to the veins and capillaries of the circulatory system. These vessels are connected to lymph nodes, which are small bean-shaped structures that help to filter the contents of the lymphatic fluid, often referred to solely as lymph, before then directing it back into the venous system. Let's now take a closer look at some of the lymph nodes of the head and neck. We can divide these nodes into two distinct groups, a ring of superficial lymph nodes and a group of deep cervical lymph nodes. We'll start with the superficial lymph nodes first. The superficial lymph nodes of the head and neck receive lymph from the scalp, face and neck and ultimately drain into the deep lymph nodes. They are arranged in a ring shape extending from underneath the chin all the way back to the posterior aspect of the head. It is important to remember that the superficial lymph nodes are usually too small to feel, however sometimes they can be felt as smooth pea-sized lumps. Lymph nodes can also be felt when infection is present, for instance a sore throat can make the neck lymph nodes enlarged and tender, as these are the nearest nodes to the site of infection. Lymph nodes can also become enlarged when infiltrated by cancer cells, but in this instance they are usually painless. Let's take a more detailed look and start naming some of the superficial nodes of the head and neck. The superficial lymph nodes in our diagram that we're going to talk about will be highlighted with the colour green to help you identify them. First up are the preauricular lymph nodes, a group usually containing between one and three nodes located anterior to the auricle of the ear. Preauricular nodes are tasked with collecting and filtering lymph from the superficial areas of the face and temporal region. Next up are the parotid lymph nodes, a small group located superficially to the parotid gland. These collect lymph from the nose and nasal cavity, the external acoustic meatus, the tympanic cavity, and the lateral borders of the orbit. There are usually between three and six submandibular lymph nodes located below the mandible in the submandibular triangle. These nodes are tasked with collecting lymph from the cheeks, the lateral aspects of the nose, the upper, lower and lateral lip, and the anterior tongue. Submental lymph nodes are located superficially to the mylohyoid muscle and primarily collect lymph from the floor of the mouth and the apex of the tongue. There are usually two posterior auricular lymph nodes, located posterior to the ear as the name suggests, lying on the insertion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle into the mastoid process. These nodes collect lymph from the posterior neck, upper ear, and the back of the ear canal. Occipital lymph nodes are often between one and three in number. These are located in the back of the head, at the lateral border of the trapezius muscle, and help to collect lymph from the occipital area of the scalp. And finally, we have the superficial cervical lymph nodes and the posterior cervical lymph nodes. The anterior most superficial cervical lymph nodes lie close to the anterior jugular vein, and collect lymph from the superficial surfaces of the anterior neck. The posterior cervical nodes lie close to the external jugular vein and collect lymph from the superficial surfaces of the posterior neck. We can now turn our attention to the deep cervical lymph nodes. These nodes go by a few different names which can be confusing, but in this video we'll refer to a group of upper deep nodes and a group of lower deep nodes. Deep cervical nodes receive all of the lymph from the head and neck, this can either be directly or indirectly from the superficial lymph nodes. They are organised into a vertical deep cervical chain located close to the internal jugular vein within the carotid sheath. The nodes making up this deep cervical chain are numerous in number, and so we won't go into too much detail surrounding them. There are, however, other important deep cervical nodes outside of the deep cervical chain that we're now going to take a closer look at. The deep cervical lymph nodes in our diagram that we're going to talk about will be highlighted with the colour red to help you identify them. The upper deep cervical nodes of particular interest to us are called the jugulodigastric lymph nodes, 
However, these are more commonly referred to as the tonsillar lymph nodes. These tonsillar nodes are contained in the pharyngeal lymphoid ring. This is a collection of lymphatic tissue surrounding the superior pharynx. Tonsillar lymph nodes drain lymph from the tonsils and can be palpated just below the angle of the mandible. These nodes become clinically relevant, particularly in cases of acute tonsillitis, where they become enlarged and tender. However, they may be palpated in healthy patients with a little bit of practice, as they are not obscured by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The two lower deep lymph nodes of interest to us are both the supraclavicular and the lower jugular omohyoid nodes. Supraclavicular nodes are found superior to the clavicle in the supraclavicular fossa. The right supraclavicular lymph node is concerned with the drainage of the midsection of the chest, esophagus and lungs. The left supraclavicular lymph node, commonly known as Virchow's node, is responsible for draining the thoracic duct, abdomen and thorax. The jugular omohyoid lymph node, although not shown in our diagram, is related to the intermediate tendon of the omohyoid muscle and is associated with the lymphatic drainage of the tongue. If enlarged, it can be a sign of a tongue carcinoma, but it can also be palpated in healthy patients with a bit of practice, as it too is not obscured by the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Being able to identify this node when it is enlarged is really important clinically, as cancer of the tongue, specifically around the posterior third, is commonly missed in patient examination, and therefore this node provides us with a really useful diagnostic tool. Now I know that's definitely a lot to take in, so here's a brief summary table of the nodes we've discussed and their drainage pathways. Having a good understanding of the anatomy and drainage of the lymph nodes of the head and neck is vital in helping us perform more comprehensive patient examinations and can be a really great tool in assisting the diagnosis of key head and neck pathology. This is a really tricky topic, but remember that you can always go back through this video, pause where you need to, and take things nice and slowly. Hopefully now you have a much better idea of the location and drainage of some of the key superficial and deep lymph nodes of the head and neck. Remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and others related to the anatomy of the head and neck and the brain. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.